So, there is a new Picard trailer out and it reveals a couple of new things for the series that I thought we could look at, but more than that I thought we could do a primer on what the crew are up to just prior to the release of this season that we know of. There will be rampant speculation and picking up on things that the cast and crew have said in this video, not spoilers, but drawn on what we already know. Starting with the trailer then, we had already met XO Commander Seven of Nine. Or Commander Nine. Commander Hansen? Yeah, but now we get a glimpse of the ship's captain. Captain Shaw, I believe he's named. This captain seems to take issue with the more combative aspects of Picard and Riker's portfolio, which was definitely the case in the later half of their careers in, in the films. But of course they accomplished far more than just conflict. We get to see more of the crew of the Titan A, some variant uniforms for non-commissioned officers, and a specialist outfit for Commodore LaForge. Speaking of, it looks like he's not happy with what goes down on the Titan at later stages. I'm guessing the rescue of Beverly Crusher goes awry, and another Federation ship is sent to intercept the Titan after the event. I guess Geordie is annoyed as the Titan's helm officer is one of his two daughters, Ensign Sidney LaForge. And clearly this mission, an initial easy flight, escalates into a life or death situation. We also get a faint look at Mika Burton, who seems to turn up in all my favourite franchises, and that's a positive. The character of Law appears again, and we're still assuming this is who he claims to be. However, if so, he has had some changes. I suspect this is a golem recreation of Law, built by Altan Soon, and restored from a disassembled backup of Law after he was defeated by Data in 2370. He appears in a Starfleet uniform, lacking a badge, which signifies him as a specialist, so I do wonder if he's actually working alongside Starfleet in some restrained capacity while they think they have a handle on him. The presence of Moriarty too suggests a strong focus on artificial intelligence, as both the Soong androids and Moriarty were far ahead of their time and subjects of intense research from Starfleet R&D. Now, the ban on that field has been lifted, it looks like Starfleet has delved back into it with a vengeance and maybe a rashness. The Titan A itself also features prominently in this trailer, in both its launch from the Sol system and in warp showing signs of damage, presumably after the collision of the vessel with Crusher aboard. The Titan A, as a reminder, is a Neo-Constitution class, not sure if that's a working title but we'll see, and the smaller ship that houses Beverly's stasis pod is seen under attack by these craft and I think inadvertently acts as bait to lure out Picard, which too is a new class of vessel, and a lot smaller and probably merely a science or scout ship. We also get to see a new type of vessel, initially I thought this was an Excelsior 2, but there are a number of differences, so I think this is yet another new vessel. This series, along with the prior Season 2, are doing a far better job of fleshing out the Starfleet Navy, first with importing a bunch of existing beta content designs from Star Trek Online, and now with new designs altogether. The Enterprise F gets an extended flyby, and considering its entourage, I think this is a test flight, and that the Odyssey class is still new and seeing the working out of any issues, it's probably not going to feature much in the show. So, as for the characters themselves, Beverly Crusher has not actually seen Picard for several years, and apparently there is a reason for that. Something happened in Crusher's recent history that has had her path diverge from Picard, but of course some level of responsibility and loyalty remains between the two. It looks like she ended up still working, if not in Starfleet, then alongside them. Geordie LaForge from 2382 to 2385 was promoted to commander and placed in charge of the evacuation fleet constructed at Utopia Planitia. This was interrupted by the attack from the Zartvash compromised since, but he did survive. In 2399 Picard still considered him a friend, and it looks like LaForge has worked his way through the ranks, 
I would guess he was still in some form of administrative or overseer role within the Corps of Engineers. It would be cool if he was the commander of Earth Space Dock or something, and it looks like his daughters followed him into Starfleet, both with presumably a love for ships considering Sydney takes the pilot career path and Alandra follows the engineering gold. Worf in the meantime left DS9 to act as the Federation Kronos ambassador but returned to service in 2379 for the wedding of Troy and Riker. He remained on the Enterprise for a further year as its first officer until Picard stepped away to take the Admiral position and helm the Romulan evacuation. This left him in charge of the Enterprise E for some time, but it does look like with the decommissioning or destruction of that vessel, he has returned to an ambassadorial position or at least back to Klingon society. Returning now could be as a favour to Picard and it looks like he will embark on a mission to locate or assist Raffi. Troy and Riker we caught up with already and it appears that Riker has retained his reactivated commission at Captain Rank and is present for the launch ceremony of the Titan A, the ship bearing the legacy registry of his own first command. However I think Troy is along for the ride because it does not look like she is in Starfleet uniform at all. I have also heard that Riker and Picard may butt heads in this series which overall looks to be a series of attacks directed personally at Picard and all he holds dear including his friends. I hope the cause of this potential rift is not Troy being injured or taken out of action, but that would certainly strain Riker and Picard's relationship. Seven was granted a field promotion to Captain of the Stargazer by Admiral Picard, however field promotions are not a guarantee, so it looks like she was bumped down to Commander but given official posting to the Titan as its Executive Officer, something I bet Janeway was chuffed with. I honestly thought the denial of her application because she was formerly a Borg drone was a bit of a weak excuse originally, but here we are with Starfleet 7 at last. I'm honestly surprised we don't see her in Science Blue considering her historic skill set, but Command makes sense for the role. As for the antagonists, we still have this mystery woman, Captain Vadic, scarred and angry, and with lots of muscle aimed specifically at the TNG crew for which she has a personal vendetta. I spent a lot of time poring over images and stills for identifying marks on her clothing, but it really all looks rather mercenary. As for the people she's working with, well, they've got cool masks and are trying to lure Picard away from Starfleet safely to not only defeat him, but hurt him. We also get the reveal of a new antagonist, this fellow who takes Riker hostage at one point. Clearly he too has inside knowledge of Picard's past, citing how much everyone he knew has changed in the past 23 years. Picard has done much in his life, so it really could be anyone from his past that has come back to correct a perceived wrong. All in all, the trailer looks to be setting the tone for a series where Picard's integrity is pulled into question by old gripes and those closest to him may even have to see how far their loyalty to their old friend and captain will go. Now 23 years later and they've all moved on in their own lives with their own important aspects to them. Will Geordi still help if it puts his daughters in harm's way for example? I am curious to see how this all pans out and maybe this series can stick the landing after both series 1 and 2 stumbled around the midway points and towards the endings for me. I'm excited to see the cast returning and the notions that they may return even as just guiding characters for a new cast moving onwards that makes me happy. I would very much like to see a continuation of live action Star Trek moving forwards with the timeline, even if they do end up overwriting the universe of things like Star Trek Online with new lore. So, I've been Rick. Thanks for watching this breakdown. Theories and your ideas are welcome and once more, thanks and goodbye.